بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد النبي الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The Traveler's Prayer We're going to talk about أحكام الصلاة في السفر The rulings of the prayer when someone is traveling So inshallah tonight we're going to be talking about the distance that if you travel you are allowed or is sunnah for you to be reducing the numbers of rak'at for some prayers like dhuhr and asr and al-isha and also we're going to talk about what type of traveling that is under this ruling because a lot of people have confusion about if I'm a truck driver I always drive and I'm always on the road can I do the qasr? Can I decrease the number of the rak'at instead of praying for it to pray it too? If the travel is not for that, if it's something prohibited Islamically, is it allowed for me to do so? And also some people say, nowadays the travel is so easy and the travel is so comfortable. So we don't see any reason for us to do the qasr, to decrease the number of the rak'at in Salatul Dhuhr. In Salatul Asr and also in Salatul Isha. Is that valid or not valid? Some people say during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they travel on camels and horses and the weather is so hot and it's really hard to travel. So because of that, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made it easy on them. So is that still valid? Nowadays, we travel by cars and planes and in some planes you can, you can have a bed you like in your house. So inshallah, we're going to discuss that. And also on Sunday, we're going to talk about more, inshallah. Some very important masail. For example, if I'm traveling, and it's the time for Salatul Dhuhr, but I did not pray it while I'm traveling, and I reach home, what do I have to do? I pray it 2 or 4, or the opposite. I leave home, and it's the time for Salatul Dhuhr, and I didn't pray, and I'm not traveling. What do I have to do, 4 or 2? And also, inshallah, on Sunday, we're going to talk about the praying on the plane. How should I pray? Should I pray sitting or standing? Should I neglect or is it not or commended for me to, play, to pray in the plane because I'm going to be distracted. I'm not going to be comfortable. Should I wait until I land then I, then I pray or I pray before I get on the plane? All of that inshallah on Sunday. We're going to cover that with more details. Bi'ithnillah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. طيب يقول موسى بن أحمد بن موسى أبو النجا في كتابه زاد المستقنع من سافر سفرا مباحا He is now talking about the type of traveling that is allowed for you to decrease the number of the rak'at in the salat القصر So he said any سفر مباح any traveling that's permissible Islamically to do such traveling an example of such traveling traveling for الحج and العمر this is not just permissible this is wajib this is obligatory. You have to do it once in your life. As long as you have the physical and the, um, the, 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 the financial ability for doing this. And then if you're going for the next time, it's not wajib for you to go. It's sunnah. So such traveling, when you travel, you have to reduce the number of the rak'at for Salatul Dhuhr and Al-Asr and Al-Maghrib. If you travel for vacation, you can do so. You travel for tourism. You can do so, no problem. Some people say no. You travel for vacation. So you're not there to do something very important. You're relaxing. So you can't uh, make the qasr. No, you still can do the qasr. It doesn't matter. Let's say I'm traveling for the tijara, for business. Going to Chicago, to California, or going out of the States, going to London, or going to Africa or Asia. I'm going for a business trip. Can I decrease the number of the rak'at in the salat? Yes, you can, as long as the traveling is a business for something permissible Islamically. If someone is traveling for business of selling wine, it's not permissible for him because this traveling is prohibited Islamically, is muharram. But if it's a business trip for any business that Islamically allowed, so there is no any problem. But if someone is traveling, a traveler that's prohibited Islamically, he cannot do the qasr. If someone is traveling to another country to attend a party where it's going to be men and women mixing together, and there's going to be drinking and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such travel is a prohibited travel. So you cannot do the qasr in such traveling. So the safar 
has to be the travel has to be mubah, has to be permissible Islamically. Either to be a wajib traveling, obligatory traveling, like traveling for Al Hajj, or permissible travel traveling, like traveling for vacation or visiting your family, or a business trip. And also someone who is a truck driver, always on the road driving, he still can make the qasr and there's no any problem. Some people say no, you cannot do that because you make your money. You make your money, but you in hardship. The reason why it's permissible for you to make the qasr to reduce the number of the rakat is the hardship of the Traveling and that applies to the person who's traveling for business and the person who's traveling for Al Hajj. So it doesn't matter, even if you travel for business, there's no any problem. You can reduce the number of the rakat in Salatul Dhuhr, in Salatul Asr, and also in Salatul Isha. And also, we're going to talk about the combination, the jama. You pray the Dhuhr and the Asr together. But we have a lot of masail to cover, so inshallah, I'm going to talk about that in details on Sunday. Then he said, Arba'atu Buradin. He is now talking about the distance that the minimum distance that you travel and then you can do the Qasr. So he said, Arba'u Burad, and that equal to 16 Farsakh, 16 Farsakh, and that equals to 8, 48 miles. If you travel for, uh, for 48 miles, so then this is a travel in that Islamically is permissible for you to make the Qasr. But Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqdisi rahimahullah in his book Al-Mughni, Ibn Qudam, one of the great scholars in the field of al-fiqh al-Islami. What he said is that making a certain distance to link it with Qasr al-Salah, this is something that does not have any dalil, does not have any proof from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor it has any proof from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't have any ayah or any hadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you travel for 48 miles, so then this is the distance that you make the qasr for. All what we have is safar, traveling in general. So this is the authentic opinion, or this is the right opinion, which is the opinion of Ibn Qudamat al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah, in his book Al-Mughni, that traveling we do not limit it or link it with a certain distance. We just go with people's understanding, people the uh, determination, people consideration. If it's in our understanding, going to Patterson in New Jersey is a travel. You're gonna try, you're gonna drive for two hours, right? If you have a broken car or a car that's not in a good condition, you will not take it for that uh, trip. So that's traveling. If you go into Cherry Hill, it's New Jersey, but it's not traveling because it's 15 minutes from Philadelphia. That's not traveling. So the traveling, that linked to the consideration of people, how people view and see the trip. It could be for a short distance, but the road is so bad. Let's say it's a mountain area, and it's very hard for you to pass through that road. And it maybe takes you two to three to four hours to just pass or to, to travel for 10 miles. So this is traveling also. This is traveling. I repeat, my dear brothers, if anything is that clear, you can ask. So for the traveling, we do not have a certain distance that if you travel for this distance, so you can make the qasr. What some scholars said, it's 48, uh, 48 miles, which is almost 75 kilometers. But this does not have any proof in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor in the Quran. So what Imam Ibn Qudamat al-Maqdisi say, given such a determination, we have to have a proof for it. Since we do not have any proof, we're just going to go with people's understanding when they say traveling. So if you go into Pittsburgh, it's traveling because you're going you're to drive for uh, four hours and you're still within Pennsylvania. Same thing if you go into Harrisburg. Is traveling, although you're traveling for two hours. Same thing if you're going to New York. So that goes to people's understanding. Anywhere we're going, if we consider traveling, so you can make the qasr. It doesn't matter how, uh, how many miles you drive or how many miles you travel. So the distance, we do not have any certain number that we can limit a link, the qasr, in the traveling with. So it's general, whenever we, we understand or whenever people say this is travel. So I'm giving example for our town, Philadelphia. 
If someone is going to Cherry Hill, nobody's going to say, I'm traveling to Cherry Hill. That's not traveling because 15 minutes you leave. But you can go to another area in New Jersey and it's travel, like Patterson. It is two hours driving. And also you could be in Pennsylvania, the same state, and you travel. If you go to Pittsburgh, it's four hours driving. If you go to Harrisburg, two hours driving. So that's distance considered as safar, as traveling. And you can make the qasr for the salat when you are traveling. Tayyib. Now. He, he lives in, po in Pocono. Yes, he lives in Delaware every day, that's job, but he's Okay, how far it is from Poc Pocono to like, Delaware? Like two hours. Like two hours, that's traveling. But it's every day, that's his job. Yeah, yeah. he's traveling. Whether it's for his job or for vacation, for whatever, it doesn't matter. So let's say he has to work from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way till 4 o'clock. So when he goes to his job, so he's traveling, he's out in town has to travel for two hours. He has to drive for two hours. So he is a traveler and he can make the qasr. A truck driver that drives from eight o'clock in the morning all the way till night, that's a traveler. He goes to Ohio or goes to Chicago, other states. That's traveling. We don't look at the uh, reason for the travel saying he's making money. Even if he's making money, he's traveling. He is within the fact of traveling. He's going from Poconos to uh, Delaware, two hours driving, that's traveling. So he makes the qasr. He prays to her, uh, two rakat. Okay? Tayyip. That's okay. There's no problem. That's okay. And we have some people, they live in Philadelphia and work in New York. That's traveling. If you go to New York, you can pray the Dhuhr Salat uh, as two rakat. Let's say you're working for the shuttle, taking people to the airport, to JFK. Some people do this job. They take people from Philadelphia to JFK every single day. Yeah, you make the Jama and the Qasr in New York. Because JFK is like two and a half hours driving. So that's travel. What about that uh, one hour drive to Delaware? That's... But it depends on where you're going in Delaware. If you go into the beginning of Delaware, I don't think it's going to take an hour, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes. So it depends on where you go. And what matters is, is how you prepare yourself for the trip. If it's traveling, definitely you're going to check and make sure that your car is in a good condition. If you want to drive to JFK, you're not going to take any car. You'll make sure it's good not to break down on the road. So that's traveling. But if I'm going to Cherry Hill, I don't care. You're not going to check anything. You're just going to start on your car and go. So that's not traveling. Okay? So that's the right opinion. Is that we do not have any certain number of miles or kilometers associated with the qasr. It's just based on people's understanding and people's consideration for any trip. If we consider it traveling, so that's it. You can make the qasr. Okay. Then he said, سُنَّ لَهُ قَصْرُ رُبَاعِيَةٍ إِذَا فَارَقَ عَامِرَ قَرْيَتِهِ أَوْ خِيَامِ قَوْمِهِ It is sunnah for him to do the qasr. And I'm going to talk about if someone does not do the qasr, he prays them for. What is the hukum? Is that permissible? Is he doing something prohibited? But we want to focus on something very important. He says, إِذَا فَارَقَ عَامِرَ قَرْيَتِهِ Which is, when can I start making the qasr? Let's say I'm traveling to my country and I'm traveling through JFK, okay? My flight is uh, maybe 6 o'clock in the evening and I want to leave maybe 12.30 to go to the airport. Before I leave my house, the adhan is cold. I'm still preparing to get it ready to leave, but I have not yet le uh, uh, left. So then I left. What do I have to do? Or when should I start the, the Qasr? So you can start the Qasr when you have left the town. If you are out of the city, in the time for the Salat al-Dhuhr, in the Adan is called, so Salat al-Dhuhr for you, you should pray it two rak'at. But if I'm home, I'm preparing to leave, 
and then they call for adhan al dhuhr and I'm praying dhuhr at home. I can't say that I'm traveling, so I'm praying it to. No, you have to pray it for. You have not yet started your traveling. Clear, inshallah. You have not yet started your traveling. So you pray for. Now, repeat it. لا لأنك أنت ما طلعت. You have not yet left, so you still in town. You're not a traveler. But let's say you left at twelve uh, o'clock. You're in the highway at twelve fifty. They call for the adhan. So you can stop anywhere, pray dhuhr and asr together, two rak'at, two rak'at. Okay. But if you're home and they call for the adhan, so you have to pray it as someone who's in town. Muqim, you not musafir. You are muqim. You are someone who's in town. So this is clear, inshallah. When you start making the qasr, when you leave the town. You live in Philadelphia, whenever you're out of Philadelphia. I'm out of Philadelphia, so I'm a traveler. Let's say I get out of my house, and I'm on my car, and they call for Adhan al-Dhuhr. I'm still in Northeast, and I'm coming to Masjid al-Furqan to pray. How many rak'at I'm going to pray Salat al-Dhuhr? Four rak'at, I'm still in town. I'm not a traveler yet. When I'm going to be a traveler, when I leave the town. When I'm out of Philadelphia, when I'm out of the town I live in, whatever town it is. So this is clear, inshallah. Think so, right? Now. I didn't get you. Say it again. The distance is 83 kilometers. No. How it comes, the scholars just said, as I, as I read, they said, The burad is the distance when they send the mail back in days so the person to deliver the mail quickly what they do is that they have a horse and he travels for a certain distance and he rests a little bit and then he takes another horse and keep on going to reach his destination quickly so from one station to another station take a half of, a half of a day so from there they say he has to travel such distance for four of such distance which is two days of traveling but they do not have any proof for this. We ask them, where is the proof? Is it in the book of Allah or is it in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Neither. So making such determination, it means a dalil. So because of that, a lot of scholars like Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad Salih al Uthaymin, Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Uthaymin, and Ibn Qudamat al maqdisin al Mughni said, no, we are not limited to this uh, determination because it doesn't have any proof. It doesn't have any dalil. So what matters is what we consider as travel. We're not, we're not talking about the, the, the location, but you always, when you travel somewhere, we have an idea for how long you're going to drive, right? So, we, we have to consider either distance or either time. Uh -huh. You know, if it's traveling or not, because if it's traveling, it's easier to travel. Because you can travel As I'm telling you, where the location of the city, this is not something we work with. What matters is this is a traveling, and it's hard on you, and you have to make preparation. So a traveling or a drive on an hour from here, for example, to Delaware, that's traveling. When you get there, make the cost. Even, Even if there's traffic, it could take you longer. We're not talking about the traffic. This is something out of the scope of what we're talking about. It is, it is not limited with a time. It is limited with how people look at it. If it's traveling, and people's understanding, so it's traveling. No, it's going to be cons it's going to be considered traveling. Take it easy. If you always have to check your car for that distance, so that's a travel. Okay? But we don't want to limit people for a certain distance and we do not have any dalil from the book of Allah, the son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam.
you know. So whoever says that, we ask him, where is the dalil? He doesn't have it. So then, the masala is simple. So anyway, the time, yes. Even if it's for pleasure. I'm going to Canada for pleasure. When I'm in Canada, I'm a traveler. Or when I'm on my way to Canada, I'm going to drive for six hours. So I'm a traveler. It do, what matters is that that traveling to be for something permissible Islamically. If someone is going to Canada to engage in a party that there is men and women and there's drinking, so that's not permissible because this traveling is haram. But if he's going for uh, visiting his family or for tourism or for whatever, he's doing something that permissible Islamically, so that's traveling and he can do the qasr and there's no any problem. So qasr has nothing to do with, uh, has nothing to do with stress that one has to undergo has to... It doesn't matter. We don't talk about the stress. Let's suppose when you travel, let's suppose they innovate a new technology that your house can fly. Your house can fly. So your house just fly to your country. You're still a traveler and you're going to make the qasr. It doesn't matter. You could be in the plane in a first class plane. And your seat could be like a bed. And in some plane you can even take a shower. So you like your home. But you are a traveler. You're going to make the qasr. It doesn't matter. And also if, you, if it's in the month of Ramadan, you can break your fast. And you all can. You're good. No matter what happened, traveling is, is something stressful. Even if you're in first class, thinking about your luggage when you arrive, something maybe uh, could be lost from you, you have things to think about. So you are stressful. No matter how uh, smooth and comfortable your travel is, believe me, you have some stress. So we, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what, 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 what type or what the purpose for the traveling, what matters is that, that the travel is that prohibited Islamically. And we don't care how you travel, by car, by plane. That's not something we deal with. As long as it's traveling, so you are allowed Islamically to reduce the number of the rakaat in Salat al-Dhuhr al-Asr in Salat al-Isha, insha'Allah. So the time you start making the Qasr, when you out of your town, when you're in town, you cannot. You have to pray for. <clears throat> okay, so what about if someone is at the airport? If it's JFK, we know that you make the Qasr because JFK is two hours driving. What about Philadelphia Airport? It is in our town. It is in our town. So let's say I leave by 11 o'clock and my flight is at 2 o'clock. And I get at the airport by 11.30 and they call for Adhan al-Dhuhr at 12.15. Can I make the Qasr? Or I'm in town. You're not in town. Because the airport usually all of, out of the town and being at the airport, that's the beginning of the journey. Being at the airport, that's the beginning of the journey. So once you get there, you can make the qasr and there's no any problem. Even if that airport belongs to your town, you can make the qasr starting from being at the airport. Because being at the airport, you have started your travel. You're going to be, uh, <coughs> you're going to check in and give your luggage and go through the security, check in everything. So you have started your travel. So you can make the qasr and make the jama' insha'Allah. Tayyib, something very important to talk about, which is al-qasr. He said it's sunnah. That's the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never abandoned it. Any single time he travels, he does that. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari, in Muslim, inni sahibtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi safar falam yazid ala raka'atayn hatta qabadahu Allah. I accompanied the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his travel and he never he, and he never goes more than two rak'at, meaning that in all his travel he was doing the qasr. Then he said, وَصَحِبْتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَلَمْ يَزِدْ عَلَىٰ رَكَعَتَيْنِ حَتَّى قَبَضَهُ اللَّهُ And then I was accompanying Abu Bakr radiallahu anh after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and Abu Bakr became the Khalifa. So Ibn Umar was with him and Abu Bakr radiallahu anh who never made uh, Salatul Asr or Salatul Dhuhr or Salatul Isha in the travel as four rak'at, always two. And same thing, ثم صحبت عثمان فلم ي... وصحبت عمر فلم يزد على ركعتين حتى قبضه الله ثم صحبت عثمان فلم يزد على ركعتين حتى قبضه الله. So he did the same thing with Umar and Uthman, following them in their travels after they become Khalifa, and they never 
ever pray for rak'at in their travel. So this is very, very important. When you're traveling, do not make it four. Make it two. That's the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And don't say, uh, the travel is easy, so I'm going to do it four, and I'm going to get more reward. No. You get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more ajab by following the sin of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So take it easy and do it as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. And some of the scholars, like Shaykh al-Islam Ahmad ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, they said, if someone does not make the qasr, he prays for, that's makruh. That's something that's not recommended. That's something uh, hated from the pers pers uh, perspective of Islam. So it's very, very important to make the qasr. When you travel, make the qasr. That's the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what's going to guarantee you to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And that's what's going to give you more hasanat bi al mawla azza wa jal. So this is very, very important. Even if, as I say, they innovate something new and your house can't fly, make the qasr. That's the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And something that we have to know, that Al-Maghrib and Al-Fajr, we cannot reduce it. So you can't say, I'm going to pray Salat al-Dhuhr, Iraqa and a half. No, no way. So it has to be three. And also you can't say, I'm going to pray Salat al-Fajr, one Raka'a, no, two Raka'a. So Maghrib and Al-Fajr are, are not in that Qasr. The Qasr only applies to Salat al-Asr, and Salat al-Dhuhr, and Salat al-Isha. And then inshallah on Sunday, we're going to talk about more uh, Masail and more uh, things that people ask, which is like being in the plane, how should I pray? Should I pray before getting on the plane or should I wait until I land? And also, if I'm traveling and I'm in town, let's say I arrive to my destination, for how long I can make that qasr? And if there is a jama'ah, should I go to the masjid and join the jama'ah? So inshallah, all of that and more, we will discuss it. This Sunday, be even al-Mawla Azza wa Jal. Nasa Allah nubarika lana fi ma sami'na. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyina Muhammad. Barakallah fi.